Wild horses have always been a symbol of the West, an animal that's been appreciated by all people. Well, wild horses um, have a legacy of being part of the West, and it's been that way for many, many years. 10,000 years ago, there are remnants of horses being here, and before that, probably even the 16th century. Horses do have a purpose for whether it is recreation or work or whatever they are, but to just be unmanaged and left running wild and free, it never was that way. Horses were photographed in TV news programs being shot from the air by people on airplanes. People all over the country saw these horses being shot and there was a national uproar. And because of that, there was a very quick passage of the Wild Horse and Burrow Act. But that act is still in effect for all wild horses in the state of Wyoming, which means you cannot kill a wild horse. It's not the horses themselves or the burrows themselves. It's the differences of opinions of how we should manage them. You hear things from we should actively manage them, um, like livestock, and you know rotate pastures, gather, remove, or to the the other side of the spectrum, leave them alone and um, let them live out their life and let nature take its course. Wild horses reproduce at the rate of about 20 percent a year throughout the western United States, and about every three to four years we conduct gathers within the herd management areas to reduce that population. And, and keep it within what we call an appropriate management level. Appropriate management level is developed according to the horse's piece of the pie. Um, so if you look at the range management area, what the range itself can sustain. Uh, the roads aren't grazable, obviously, and those things are looked at and evaluated over the entire landscape, and then um, an appropriate management level is set from there. Here in Wyoming, yes, the herd management areas cover um, state land, uh, um, private land, and um, federal public land. So um, there is mixed ownership in our herd management areas. As the horses continue to populate, uh, our only means of control is removal from the range. The act was passed in 1971, of course, and it was a few people wanted to save the wild horses on the range. They didn't want them completely eliminated, which I understand. We finally agreed to allotment management levels. Well, you have three to five year cycles. Well, once we ever reach the management upper limit, we've never ever very seldom got down to the lower one because they can't gather enough horses. They don't have anywhere to go with them. You know, we're double over our allotment management levels, plus all our herd level management areas are way over what was established in the past. But we asked when we might be proposed to be in the next gather, they said, we may never gather again. If you want to use a track record in the past, most federal land ranchers will end up taking a cut or a downsize in the amount of animals they'll be able to run during their grazing season to make room for horses. But at some point, there won't be any room for just the horses. Our current population in the United States is 67,000 wild horses on public lands as of today. Our appropriate management level is 26,000. At the rate of only 2,500 animals being adopted a year, it becomes a very much a challenge to manage that population. Um, if they don't get adopted or don't get, a, don't get sold, then we put them in long-term holding. When those horses are rounded up, they are sent to holding centers, which means that the taxpayer is stuck with holding those horses and feeding them where they're no longer wild, where they just stand there in the sun all day long and are fed hay. I think one thing that the public doesn't realize is how much feral horses cost them every day. That there's more in captivity than on the range right now. That won't last very long because they increase 15 to 20 percent every year. If you, if you do the simple math on 25,000 horses at 20 percent, that's an increase of 5,000 horses a year. The real key is, is how do we slow that reproduction and get it to a managed level that is acceptable to the public. And, and works for the horses as well as the rangelands. So our goal is to really, well, a couple of things. First of all, to educate people about the wild horses and that they're a magnificent group. And that secondly, to help whoever is, needs to be helped to keep the population down. And in the McCulloch Peaks, we've been able to do that over the last few years by doing birth control for the horses. 
So in 2006, in Wyoming, we started using what we call PZP, and eventually that product wears off and the mare can cycle again, come into heat, and birth again. Um, we're finding challenges, like with any animal, is birth control. It only seems to be working in certain herd management areas where we can do the darting annually, or we can go back and be treating every two years because it wears off. And then if we don't get back to it uh, quick enough, then it's the horses are coming back really healthy after having a break. Other, other management uh, opportunities are with eco-sanctuaries. We have two wild horse eco-sanctuaries in Wyoming. The premises of it was to have a place for the horses to live, plus open it up to people to come view the animals, and that would help offset the cost of caring for them. We saw in the paper where the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, was looking for private landowners to help take the pressure off the public lands, but we took a crack at it thinking there's always ways to diversify and, and uh, bring income in for the ranch. And, 300 is what we started at, and, and eventually I'm sure we'll get a pretty good, uh, or have good knowledge on either that's the perfect number or maybe 50 or 100 more would work. So the most rewarding thing I think is to take people out there, know that you're helping to educate them, and not only the horses, but they get to see an actual ranch. Jana said to me, she goes, uh, Rich, out of the 30 years we've been there, whoever came in and said, what a beautiful cow you have. Everybody comes in and loves the horses. I, I haven't had anybody that thought different. The other management uh, activity we use in Wyoming and, and other western states is uh, what we call off-range pastures. These are private contracts. We have roughly 30 of those in the United States that house some 30,000 wild horses. So all this is part of the rational process to do reasonable things about protecting wild horses. Uh, it would be even more reasonable if people would um, adopt the horses. The other aspect of management is wild horse adoption. We take some of these horses in Wyoming and take them to the Riverton Honor Farm, a, a prison training program where the inmates work with the wild horses and halter and saddle start the animals for the public to adopt. Rangeland is important to sustain the horses, but it isn't just the horses that we're worried about. It's wildlife, it's the users, the ranchers, the recreationists. And so trying to find that balance with the forage base we have, with all the different uses of livestock, wildlife, wild horses, and rangeland health is, is, is a real challenge in the West. Well, I just would like to see a sensible solution and something that we can all live with. and that's manageable from a monetary and rangeland perspective. There's room for them, and most ranchers won't argue that there shouldn't be some. We've pretty much given in to that fact that there's never going to be total removal, which is fine. But our feeling is that if you had a designated management area where there wasn't other kinds of grazing, and where things like sage grouse or any other threatened or endangered species might be. Now I can tell you about a little cooperative arrangement we've done which makes our area unique. The Friends of a Legacy program, FOL, has a, what's called an MOU. It's an agreement with both the Bureau of Land Management and it was with Marathon Oil Corporation to provide a water source for not only the horses but for any of the wildlife and even cattle that happen to be in the management area. This is a cooperative relationship and it's worked very well and it shows that uh, advocacy groups, the government and private industry can all work together. The whole perception of horses in this country is going to have to change, whether they're domestic or feral wild horses on the range. Search out the truth and I mean it takes all kinds of people in this world to make it go around. But if we all have the same passion, if we all love horses, or if, it's, if we love the range, we can find a way to work together. And this is all part of this great thing we call the West. And what I hate to see is it get too civilized, I guess that's the word I'd use, you know, with people coming from the outside who want to make it like somewhere else. And so therefore, I'm always thrilled to see the habitat being protected 
from bison to wolves to bears to sage grouse to whatever happens to be the particular animal that may face troubles in the future. And wild horses are part of that.